Our next guest just published her 2023 outlook, says weaker economic trends are likely for next year, but a mild recession could set stocks up for a better second half. Joining us now, Charles Schwab, Chief Investment Officer, Lizanne Saunders. Almost sounds positive, Lizanne, which <laughs> I, I haven't heard from you in a, in a very long time, but, you, but we still have to wait until second half of next year. Explain. Well, I, I don't know if it's so precise to the second half. It's really just trying to gauge when some of the headwinds, which I think the, the market is still facing, some of the obvious ones, including inflation having started to come down, but certainly not anywhere near the uh, target for the Fed, keeping their foot on the, the brake a, a bit longer. But, you know, relative to a year ago when we wrote the 2022 outlook, when we, the market had a lot of speculative excess in it, we were trading at all time highs. There was really no consideration of weakness coming in the economy. The Fed had li hadn't lifted off the zero bound. That was a pretty poor setup for the year. Now, at the recent lows, you had not only just the S&P down 25 percent, but the average S&P member had had a 35 percent drawdown, even bigger for the Nasdaq, 35 percent at the index level, 50 percent at the average member level. So a lot of pain has already, uh, I think, been digested by the market. Yeah. I think what's still ahead is for further downward revisions to forward um, earnings and further deterioration uh, in the labor market. Well, that's sort of what I was going to ask, Lizanne, which is how far do you think the market has gone toward pricing a recession, which you do expect? Yes. In fact, I think we're, we're already in a version of recession. Uh, we've been talking about it in the context of a rolling recession. There are pockets of the economy that are undoubtedly in recession territory, housing, certain segments of the goods side of the economy, the, the stay-at-home types of uh, areas within the economy, absolutely in recession, CEO confidence, consumer confidence. But we've had the offsetting positive on the services side, and that's rolled its way through the inflation data as well. I actually think it's probably going to roll through the earnings uh, deterioration from a sector to sector uh, standpoint. So I think the answer to recession is yes, it may just be more of the rolling variety than your more standard sort of mm. bottom falls out all at once. So if you like the setup better going into next year than last year, would you be interested in technology, which is one of the beaten, most beaten down parts of the market? NASDAQ down 30 percent this year, S&P only down 17. Um, I, I, I'd be really careful about uh, just a monolithic call on tech as a sector. As you know, Sarah, we've talked about on this program, we have been more focused on factor-based investing as opposed to just broad uh, sectors, looking for the characteristics that we think will work in this environment, healthy balance sheets, strong free cash flow, positive earnings revisions, positive earnings surprise. So those are the types of factors I think you want to look for. It's certainly possible you'll find them in the tech sector. I just wouldn't make that blanket call. I think we're in an important shift, maybe somewhat secular, away from mega cap tech, techie type names to sort of the average stock. With, with the return of something that's actually a risk-free rate, I think that pricing distortions or lack of price discovery meant as an investor you could look at things monolithically. Passive did really well. Now, equal weight yeah. is outperforming cap weight. Active is... Uh, you know, operating on a more level playing field with with passive. So I think maintaining that factor approach and screening for characteristics as opposed to just making a sector call, I think makes more sense.